Okay, today I just want to do a little bit of a review for the Super Famicom system. Now, before I go into the system, I want to show you something because I actually had this Atel View under it for a couple weeks now, but I barely got the Super Famicom in the mail yesterday. So I was looking at the box and it was kind of weird. I just wanted to show you that real fast. Okay, you see that? There's like a chicken with the camera. And then there's, I don't know what that is. So here's a chicken with the camera or something. Just want to show you that real fast. Okay. Now we're into the Super Famicom. The Super Famicom, as I'm sure most of you know, not all of you, but probably most, is the Japanese version of the Super Nintendo. Now right away you could probably notice that it's a lot probably a lot nicer looking than what we got here in America. For one thing, it's a lot rounder. No, I mean, not round, but flatter. That's it. Flatter. And overall, it looks a lot nicer. Now let me turn this off real fast. Now another difference is right here, the eject. It pushes down and has, has seems to be a bit more complicated than the simple leather lever <laughs> that we got here in the US. Now another difference is in the games. See right here I got a game Super Robot Wars 4. These games don't have end labels. And on the back I like they say Super Famicom cassette which is interesting. Not cartridge but cassette. There's a game. Now I also have this game Batman Returns and Derby Stallion 2. Now let's compare this to, say, an American game. The American game is a lot square and different. No one label. Gray is different too. Let's see. Now, right here, I've got an American Super Nintendo. It's a lot different, a lot different looking. It's a lot square, not very flat. Overall, a lot uglier. Now here's some, just show you, some good Super Nintendo games you might want to check out. Here's Pocky and Rocky, very good game, very hard, I might add. Mar Mario RPG. Chrono Trigger, another good one. Another good one, less known. Mega Man Soccer. And here's an expensive one, Earthbound. Now, all these games I just showed you are were also released on Super Famicom. Earthbound was called Mother 2. I believe this was Mother 2. Now, I think Batman, is, this is an American game too. Pocky and Rocky, I'm sure, and this is the only one I'm not sure of. I'm pretty sure this is probably in Japan also. Chrono Trigger is in the Japan, Japanese Super Nintendo also. And Mario RPG also is. Now I'm off, now I'm off subject right now. I just want to show you the backs. You can notice the backs are different too. Because on this one... Wait for it to focus. Not wanting to focus. Okay, I don't know why it's not wanting to focus right now. But, they basically say warnings of like, what not to do with your cassette, basically. Which are pretty obvious for the most part. Now, if you're just going to buy a Super Panicom, I must tell you one thing. They do not use the same power as the Super Nintendo. They believe, I believe they use a, they're compatible with Sega Genesis Model 1, I want to say, but I'll do some research first before you go plugging stuff in. They also use the same AV cable. Now, something special I have here is with the Satellaview, you got this, because unlike the Sega Genesis and the Sega CD, you only need one AC. Here's the one AC adapter. Now, it puts out a pretty good amount. It puts out... Mm, only 8 volts. Never mind. But, 
This AV, this is the AV selector, see? Here's the input in from the Super Famicom. These cables right here go to the Satellaview. This, one of these is power and the, another is some cable for the broadcast system. Now, right here, I believe this is where your, which, St. St. Gaga, um, tuner went in, and another cable from there. And then this went in there also. And then these cable go to the video out, which plugs in right there to my little TV. Okay. <clears throat> now, the Super Famicom was pretty successful. Let's see. Oh, before I tell you, another reason why the U.S. This is, I heard, the U.S. didn't get a flat model like this is because with the NES, I know, I'm sure most of you know that it's nice and flat. You could put whatever you want on top of it, pretty much. Like soda, which is a big problem I notice nowadays. If you try to buy one, there's a whole bunch of soda stuck onto it. And that's what I heard with the reason Nintendo designed it with all those ridges. There's some gamers couldn't put like their soda on it and spill it. Because with this, you could easily put your soda anywhere on it. And you could spill it. So, yeah. Now, a special thing I have with this is on the bottom, I have this Satellaview. It looks pretty cool, I must say, it's a Satellaview. Because I really wanted to get a Satellaview, and I got it. Now, a cool thing with the Satellaview plugged into the bottom is when you turn it on, that light also turns on right there. Pretty cool. Now, unfortunately, these things will run you quite a... Well, not that much, but run usually more, quite a bit more than a standard U.S. Super Nintendo, depending if you want to get it in the box, if it's all ugly yellow, and pretty much. Now, if you got bare bones. Now, this one I got, I got bare bones system, because... Compatible with the Super Nintendo controllers. They're not that much different looking. If I want, I could get a Super Nintendo controller in the future. I mean, a Super Famicom controller in the future. And it would co it cost me less. So, another thing with the Super Famicom is it has a logo. Now, the U.S. Super Nintendo really doesn't have a logo. I guess you could consider that... And the cartridges to be its logo, but I don't really think it's logo. I think of it as its name. Now, the Super Famicom had a logo, which is these, like, three, four ovals right here. Green, blue, red, yellow. Now, something interesting I noticed is on the dust covers for Super Nintendo games, I don't know why they used that logo since it wasn't anywhere on the Nintendo, the American systems. But it has the Super Famicom logo on the dust cover, which is interesting. Just wanted to share you share that with you. Now another thing is, U.S. cartridges will not fit into a Super Famicom. They won't fit at all. Now the thing is kind of. Now you could play. Now, um, Super Famicom games will fit in a Super Nintendo, but you can't play them because of the Super Nintendo inside has little tabs, which are over there. But easy way to get around that is just to cut off the tabs or use a Game Shark. I mean, uh, with a Game Genie, but then you still gotta remove the tabs, so you're gonna end up removing tabs if you wanna play Super Famicom games on a US system. You could get, or also you could get, they sell little things that just put the port, like pin extenders, yeah. So, yeah. Now I want to show you an interesting thing. Is a lot of Super Famicom games have English in it, and this Batman is a very good example.
Oh man, the English isn't showing up. Oh, there we go. Turn up the sound. Yeah, and that's good enough. I'm sure you guys are getting bored with that, so... Sorry this review wasn't that good, but... It's pretty cool, because... All the Super Famicom videos I've ever seen besides one, they never have this to tell of you. So... Hope you enjoyed it. Please... Give thumbs up, and stuff. Adios.